Hey, Kid Gengas Deva here with another exciting video. Today I will try to help you as much as possible to prepare for the stuff in Jiva Siege. Of course we don't know almost anything about it since it's not released yet and the most will be theory and speculations but there are a few things that will guaranteed be helpful for Papa Jiva. Last week Capcom released a preview event quest where we could test some stuff out and have a first look of the monster. However, the Siege is probably going to have special mechanics where you have to do specific things to progress through areas. Just like Kulva Taroth, you had to break specific amount of parts to make her move, or like the horns didn't take any damage after breaking until area 4 and stuff like that. So one thing is sure, you have to deal damage. So I'm going to heavily rely on this video on how to efficiently deal damage to Safi Jiva. The first point, and uh, maybe a really useful one, is poison. Poison is a really good choice because big monsters like Safi or Shara take 2000 damage per poison proc. You have three options to poison it. Either use poison weapons like Gold Rathian Tree, they are the strongest in the game for most weapons so you will be doing high row melee damage as well. Poison bombs which can be thrown anytime and it's probably the easiest and cheapest option and it's pretty guaranteed to hit Safi since he is so big and doesn't move. Poison ammo, so pick a good heavy or light bowgun that has poison ammo but as well high damaging ammo type but we will get later into the builds. Poison duration up, this is a skill that no one has talked about yet, I've used it in one of my previous builds because it's mostly useful for very long fights which you hardly will face on the game yet. It says it extends the duration of monsters being poisoned and I actually did test it on Safi Jiva and I was surprised of how much it increased the duration. The monsters are going to be twice as long poison. This means one poison on Safi will deal 4000 damage till it wears out. The armor is really cheap to build in and you can combine it with Master's Touch. It's only a 2 piece bonus and can be mixed with either Ping or Green Rathian. The chest piece comes with a lot of free slots and the skill tool specialist which will be very handy at the fight since it's probably going to be a long fight and you need to use your mantles multiple times, so this will reduce your cooldown times on the mantles as well. Here is a few but very important things that you need to know about poison. You can't build up or extend poison while the monster is poisoned, so don't waste poison bombs or ammo during that. To know if a monster is poisoned you can check its mouth and you will see a purple poison animation and gets 100 damage per tick every few seconds. Just like all other statuses, every time you get a poison proc, the next one will be harder to get since the threshold increases, so the second one will be harder than the first one and the third one is harder than the second one. So let's say you are able to poison Safi 5 times during the whole hunt and that will be about 10,000 damage. Now if you use poison duration up, it will be already 20,000 damage with the same amount of struggle between each poison to activate. Our point number 2 is blast and part breaks. Blast weapons are ok to have with you because they also come with high row damage. Every blast proc deals 600 damage on Safi so it will be very good at the beginning of the fight to drain some HP down. At some point it will be hard to keep getting blast procs though since the threshold will have increased by a lot. So it will be nice to change mid fight if possible but I don't wanna promise much like you can continue using blast. Blast also helps a lot to have damage focused on one part of Papi Jiva which leads to easier part breaks. Breaking a part will let you deal way more damage so the skill part breaker is as well not a bad choice. It increases your part breaking damage by 30%, meaning if you do 100 damage on a part, it will count as 130 damage towards the part HP but not towards the monster's real HP. Greedsword has a highest part breaking modifier in the game. A true charge slash has built in 70% natural part breaking damage, so assuming you deal 1000 damage with part breaker 3, you will deal 2000 damage towards the part HP. You still will see on your screen only 1000, but the part takes 2000 damage, but this does not count towards the monster's HP. Part damage and uh, normal damage are totally different things. This is the easiest way to break parts in the game. Good matchup and weapons. Weapons with attacks that ignores hit zone values or high elemental weapons since Safi Jiva hit zones are very horrible. 
but we will have as well 30% decreased damage modifier on bomb type of weapons, which is bombs, charge plate files, both elemental and impact, gunland shells, stickies and clusters. It still would be good for now to use weapons that do always fixed amount of damage that ignores monster hit zone values. Safi has a qual weakness to all elements so it doesn't really matter which one you use for now. I've seen all kinds of elements being used on speedruns and mostly heavy bowguns with elemental or piercing ammos and they deal pretty good damage. A really important point is item loadouts. Not just for this fight but for any fight. Be sure to take the right items with you and enough recrafting material for either ammo or healing potions, for example defense and attack up powder, seeds and drinks, healing and max potions, dust of life and life powers will be welcome to help your teammates out. You can also rearrange the order and set your radial menu for quicker access and better overview. Farcasa will be very handy item to teleport back to camp in case you need to restock again. Since it's a siege, you will need to coordinate with your team. For example, having a guy that is going to take the healing role and one guy that does control the monster with KO and paralyzes. When I say healing role, I don't mean that someone should go crawl in a corner and wait for someone to take damage and heal them up, or neither run around and throw slingers. Just a guy who you can rely on that will be healing you at some point when your HP is low because having one guy doing nothing will guaranteed fail the siege. The Rajang HPG or LBG is perfect for multiplayer kills. Using impact mantles with two slugger jewels slotted in will give you a much easier time getting KOs. So let's get to the build part. I made different builds for you guys that in my opinion will be very helpful at our current state of knowledge about Boomer Jiva since they will be doing consistent damage and not required to snipe for specific parts. I will keep it short and say the necessary things about the builds only because we can make this a one hour long video. The Rajang HPG sticky build, so literally all you need to hit max damage on sticky ammo is artillery 5 for 50% increased damage and it for the foot skill failing bombardier for an extra 10% damage. Everything else can be your choice. I picked level 5 guard and guard up so you're able to block anything but as well nullify the knockback in combination with 4 shield modes. The 5th shield mode should be power barrel to increase KO damage. By choice you can use slugger but I prefer slotting it in my impact mantle. Divine blessing and health boost will give you an insane survivability. Peak performance is just an extra for a tiny increase on damage and can be replaced by anything you wish. As for charm you should definitely go with razor sharp for a 20% increased ammo quantity. Augments will be health and attack. In case you don't have any level 4 decos, you can use this build, it's just missing peak performance basically. Number 2 are the charge blades. Now here you can either use a gold rathian or the blast charge blade. The goldian will allow you to poison so you will get besides your file damage extra poison damage over time. The build will be a classic max dps build with 3 extra health boosts. We also have the set skill master touch but as well poison duration up which I mentioned before. This also gives you 3 free tool specialists, which will allow you to get your mantles back way faster. In case you don't want poison you can use this build and gain the skills guard up and offensive guard for even more damage if you're pretty experienced in perfect timed guards. As for augments, I use 1 health regeneration and 2 times element up. Here is again a build without level 4 decos, just in case you don't have any level 4 decos and we just gave up basically offensive guard here. For blast charge plate I went with Prachidios but in case you want to use Sora or sticks be sure to watch my blast charge plate video that I posted last week. So using this build as in savage axe or even artillery build will get you some free extra damage besides your normal dps. 600 damage from blasts every now and then are some serious damage. Augments will be 1 affinity, 1 health regen and 1 element up. Here is a no level 4 deco build which is basically just missing crit boost but really not a big deal. Safi has such a hit trash hit zones you will basically deal almost no melee damage. On charge blade the most damage will come from files and poison or either blast. 
The Sorak Reedsword is your best option since it has almost as high row as Acid Glove but as well free blast which easily outdamages Acid Glove. The build has just enough sharpness to reach purple and with a skill master touch it will be 200 hits of purple since we only reach 95% in case you want to use health augment. Else you will just go full out on affinity modes and affinity augments. And yes I know it has a high rank part in it, Teostro Gamma is the only way to fit this stuff in and make this build working. And when I say defense is completely useless, then I mean it's completely useless, regardless if you have one high rank part, if you have two high rank parts, or even three high rank parts, it will not save you, don't try to excuse yourself dying because you have 100 or 200 less defense, it does not make any difference at all. I've seen complaints too many times on my videos about this, you just suck at the game, get over it, just kidding, I love you, please like this video, but yeah, defense makes not much difference or any difference as long as you're above 600. Okay, so we also have focus level 3 for faster charging and health boost for survivability. Here is a no level 4 deco build which was even harder to make but at least it worked and we only missed focus and gained one more high rank part because it was the only combination. So the 5th build is either going to be here or not depending on my friend if he responds to me because I have absolutely no idea about guns lenses and didn't want to include this but it's one of the best choices you can use against Boomer Jiva. So I will wait for my friend to send me the build else I think there is a YouTuber called Cowslayer and I think he makes pretty good gun lens videos. I never watched one of his simply because I don't, uh, I'm not interested in gun lens. But I think he's the uh, only YouTuber with them, and I heard he makes pretty good videos. So yeah. So this was it. I hope at least I could prepare you for the first few days because we will gain so much more knowledge and info during the weekend and discover more efficient mechanics to farm this boomer. So be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn that bell on because as soon as she launches I will probably be streaming it and the day after show you all siege weapons and make a new and better guide than this one. I hope you all enjoyed this video and if so be sure to leave a like and comment down below if you have any more suggestions for Safi videos. With that said I wish you all a nice day and happy hunting guys. Don't forget.